Hi. My name is Martine, and this short story will be about bacterial luciferase, so, let's get started. Phytoplanktons, fireflies, squids, and mushrooms. These are a few of many organisms, that have the ability to produce light under certain circumstances. This phenomenon, is known as, bioluminescence. What do we know about bioluminescence? From myth, to science. The idea of bioluminescence traveled through time first as a myth, with the earliest mentions of it, in Chinese poetry. Then later in ancient Greece, with Aristotle believed to be the first to record this phenomenon, on the flesh of dead fish, disturbed seawater, glowworm and fireflies. Later, in 17th century Europe, the father of modern chemistry, Robert Boyle, with the help of his assistant Robert Hooke, designed an experiment, using the famous Boyle air pump, which showed that oxygen, not known to be part of the air at the time, was essential to bioluminescence. The heart behind this mesmerizing bio-light factory is known as luciferase. Even though they evolve separately in different species, which explains the great variety of structures and sequences. Luciferases are known as any enzyme, capable of catalyzing a reaction, that results in the emission of light visible to other organisms. In this presentation, we will focus on the bacterial luciferase, present in Vibrio harvei. Classification, Structure and Function This heterodimer with two identical domains, is in the class of alpha and beta folds, which are its two major chains. It also has an alpha beta barrel architecture. Furthermore, it has a TIM barrel topology, which consists of a conserved region of eight alpha helices and eight parallel beta strands that alternate. Bacterial luciferase, also known as, alkanal monooxygenase, is in the homologous superfamily FMN flavonucleotide dependent fluorescent proteins. What does the machinery behind bioluminescence in Vibrio harvei look like? It all starts with quorum sensing. When the population of bacteria is sparse, metabolic products, autoinducers 1 and 2 in harvei, are in low concentration in the environment. But with increased density, Enough autoinducers diffuse across cell membranes to activate the lux operon for the emission of light. This operon is transcribed and translated, to synthesize a fatty acid reductase enzyme complex, from lux C, D and E, and luciferase, from lux A and B. Upon synthesis, luciferase will have three substrates, a reduced flavin mononucleotide, oxygen and long fatty aldehyde chain. While oxygen is reduced, the other two are oxidized. The excess energy from the oxidoreduction is released as a blue-green light emission. For this reaction, several ligands are bound to the enzyme, to create inter-subunit communication. Here, is a cartoon of the FMN in its pocket, bound to the enzyme. In this pocket, it is in contact with several residues of the enzyme. Here, Two phosphate ions are highlighted. One on each dimer unit. This close-up, shows several points of contact of the FMN phosphate group with the enzyme. And here, the position of several sulfate ions dispersed over the two subunits. Each sulfate ion is in contact with two residues, aspergine and aspartic acid. Furthermore, the FMN pocket, is a region of largely conserved residues shown in pink and purple here, while the surface residues, are mostly variable. What primary and secondary structure is responsible for the final quaternary protein architecture, that we know as bacterial luciferase? With a protein database, we are able to see the primary structure, in one letter code, alongside the secondary structures of the subunits. It also annotates the specific interaction sites between the enzyme and its ligands. The alpha chain, is the only one with interaction sites with the FMN substrate, since it is the active chain. 
the other sites being interactions with the sulfate ligands, on the other hand, the beta chain only has sites of contact with sulfate ions. In the end, all these intricate interactions, between bacterial luciferase and its substrates and ligands, are responsible for this curious phenomenon, known as, bioluminescence in vibrial harvae, whether it's free living or in a mutualistic relationship. Thank you for listening to my story about this amazing enzyme. Until next time, don't forget to be awesome.